Hello, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into an exciting topic that has intrigued historians, economists, and political scientists for decades. Why did China choose communism instead of capitalism? And more importantly, what can we learn from it? Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more content. Now, let's get into it. Part 1. A Brief History of China To truly understand China's choice, we must first take a trip back in time. So buckle up as we embark on a whirlwind tour of China's fascinating history. China, one of the world's oldest continuous civilizations, boasts a rich and complex history that spans thousands of years. But for our purposes, we'll focus on the period leading up to the rise of communism. The 19th and early 20th centuries were a tumultuous time for China. As European powers expanded their empires, China found itself at the mercy of foreign influence and exploitation. The once great nation was fractured and humiliated, suffering from widespread poverty, corruption, and social unrest. In response to these challenges, a diverse range of political ideologies and movements emerged, each promising a better future for China. One such movement was communism, which first appeared on the scene in the early 1920s, inspired by the Russian Revolution of 1917. But it wasn't an easy road for the communists. They faced stiff competition from the nationalist Kuomintang, led by Chiang Kai-shek, who advocated for a more capitalist approach. This set the stage for an epic battle of ideas that would determine the fate of China. Part 2. The Rise of Communism So, how did the communists manage to outmaneuver the nationalists and establish their rule over China? Well, strap in, because we're about to find out. The Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, was founded in 1921. Its early leaders like Chen Duxiu and Li Dazhao were passionate about transforming China into a modern egalitarian society. But the communists didn't have an easy ride. The nationalists initially allied with the CCP, but turned against them in 1927, launching a brutal campaign to eliminate their rivals. The CCP went into hiding, regrouping under the leadership of a young and charismatic figure named Mao Zedong. Mao was a game-changer for the communists. He recognized that China's vast rural population was a crucial untapped resource in the struggle for power. He shifted the party's focus from urban workers to peasants, promising them land reform and a better life. This strategy paid off, and the communists gained increasing support among the rural population. Meanwhile, the nationalists struggled to maintain control, as their policies failed to address the dire economic and social issues plaguing the country. Then, in 1937, Japan invaded China, forcing the nationalists and communists to temporarily unite against a common enemy. However, this fragile alliance disintegrated after World War II, when both sides resumed their power struggle in a full-blown civil war. The communists, with their strong grassroots support and guerrilla warfare tactics, emerged victorious in 1949. The People's Republic of China was born, with Mao Zedong as its leader. The nationalists, defeated, retreated to Taiwan, where they established the Republic of China. Part 3. The Appeal of Communism So, we've seen how the communists came to power in China. But why did they opt for communism over capitalism in the first place? Let's dive into key factors that made communism so appealing. Firstly, communism promised to address the glaring social and economic inequalities that plagued China. By abolishing private property and redistributing wealth, the communists aimed to create a classless society where everyone would have equal access to resources and opportunities. This resonated with the Chinese population, who had long suffered under the yoke of feudalism and an oppressive landlord class. Secondly, the communist model offered an alternative to the Western capitalist system, which many Chinese associated with imperialism, exploitation, and humiliation. China's bitter experience with foreign powers had left a deep sense of resentment, and embracing communism allowed the nation to distance itself from the West, assert its independence, and chart its own path. Thirdly, the success of the Soviet Union in industrializing and modernizing its economy served as a powerful example for China. The Chinese leadership, eager to restore the country's greatness, saw in communism a proven blueprint for rapid development and progress. They believed that a planned economy, with emphasis on central planning and state control, would allow them to marshal the nation's resources effectively and achieve their ambitious goals. 
Another factor that contributed to the appeal of communism was its emphasis on nationalism and the fight against foreign domination. The communists positioned themselves as defenders of China's sovereignty and champions of the struggle against imperialism. This message resonated strongly with the Chinese people, who were eager to reclaim their nation's dignity and pride after years of subjugation. Finally, the charismatic leadership of Mao Zedong played a critical role in the appeal of communism. Mao's charisma and his ability to connect with the rural masses helped to galvanize support for the communist cause. His vision of a new China, free from exploitation and united under the band of socialism, inspired millions to join the communist movement. In summary, the appeal of communism in China can be attributed to a confluence of factors. Its promise to address social and economic inequalities, its position as an alternative to Western capitalism, its potential to drive rapid industrialization and modernization, its emphasis on nationalism, and the charismatic leadership of Mao Zedong. These factors combined to create a potent and irresistible force that would shape the course of Chinese history for decades to come. Part 4. Communism in Practice Now that we understand why communism appealed to China, let's take a closer look at how it was implemented and the impact it had on the country. Under Mao, China underwent a series of radical social, political, and economic transformations. The early years of communist rule saw sweeping land reforms, as land was seized from landlords and redistributed to peasants. This move aimed to address the deeply rooted inequalities in Chinese society and to empower the rural population who had long been neglected. Industry and commerce were nationalized, placing the means of production firmly under state control. Education and healthcare were expanded, and efforts were made to promote gender equality and social mobility. These policies initially led to increased agricultural production, economic growth, and improvements in the living standards of millions. However, the situation took a darker turn with the launch of the Great Leap Forward in 1958. This ambitious campaign aimed to accelerate China's industrialization and modernization, with a focus on steel production and agricultural collectivization. But the unrealistic targets and poorly planned policies led to widespread famine claiming millions of lives and causing immense suffering. Despite this disaster, Mao remained undeterred in his pursuit of a communist utopia. In 1966, he launched the Cultural Revolution, a decade-long period of chaos and violence that tore the fabric of Chinese society apart. This mass movement aimed to rid China of bourgeois elements and reassert Mao's control over the party. The Cultural Revolution saw the persecution of intellectuals, the destruction of cultural heritage, and countless human rights abuses. Millions of young people, known as the Red Guards, were mobilized to carry out Mao's vision, leading to widespread violence, forced labor, and the disruption of education and economic activity. After Mao's death in 1976, China began to reevaluate its commitment to strict communism. Under the leadership of Deng Xiaoping, the country embarked on a path of economic reform and opening up allowing for limited market-oriented policies and private enterprise. This marked the beginning of a new era, as China moved away from the ideological rigidity of the past and towards a more pragmatic approach. The economic reforms of the 1980s and 1990s saw the gradual liberalization of the Chinese economy, with the establishment of special economic zones, the entry of foreign investment, and the promotion of entrepreneurship. These changes sparked a period of rapid economic growth, transforming China from an impoverished nation into an economic powerhouse. Today, China's economy is a unique blend of socialism and capitalism, often described as socialism with Chinese characteristics. While the state retains control over key industries and strategic sectors, the market plays an increasingly important role in driving growth and innovation. The impact of communism in practice has been a mixed bag for China. On one hand, it provided the foundation for rapid industrialization, modernization, and poverty reduction. The other, it led to periods of great suffering, upheaval, and lost potential. As China continues to evolve, it remains to be seen how its unique political and economic system will shape its future in the decades to come. And there you have it. The story of why China chose communism over capitalism is a complex tale of history, ideology, and the struggle for power. It reminds us that political and economic systems are not one-size-fits-all solutions, but rather evolve in response to unique cultural, historical, and societal factors. I hope you enjoyed this fascinating journey into China's past. 
If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more engaging content. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.